Thank you very much. Um, in this lecture, I will talk about uh, several influencing philosophers uh, in the field of uh, technology. Uh, Martin Heidegger, Don Heide, Thomas Kuhn, and Paul Firebend. Uh, I will try to claim that uh, if you take the origin of the work of art by Heidegger and analyze the iPhone with the help of Kuhn and Heide, it will be a work of art. Um, work of art that reveals something new, new kind of design never existed before. So please bear with me while I jump from one term to the other. In the book, uh, The Origin of the Work of Art, Heidegger points out the paradox inherent in the work of art. According to him, art is something the artist does, and the, the artist is someone who does art. Heidegger, in his complicated way, takes us through, through a whirlwind circle that's gaining momentum, from which you conclude that art is on its own. Art defines the artist, and art defines itself. Art not only defines the artist and itself, art is clearing new worlds for us. Art precedes, by Heidegger, any other act. The temple allows re the religion, not vice versa. The poetry allows the language. And the painting of the peasant shoes is one that tells us the, the, true and, uh, the true meaning of the farmer's life. Thomas Kuhn, in The Structure of uh, Scientific Revolution, argues that the paradigm is not derived from um, former knowledge. It is not a linear progression, it's a jump. Moreover, Kuhn claims that uh, new paradigms are groundless. They are based on fate, not facts. Um, if it wasn't, then it, wasn't new, it, it is not a new paradigm, it's a shift. And Firebend discard um, the scientific method. He says that new paradigms not, need, not only need uh, to be groundless, but they are free from every uh, dependency on the method itself. Again, if it's not free, then it's a shift, not an innovation. Now, when I look at this idea soup, I try to think if art create the artist, could it be that the artist create the designer, the designer create the iPhone, and the iPhone created uh, the new designer? Could it be that the iPhone is the work of art that Heidegger is looking for? Now, designers are naturally engaged in phenomenology. We cannot create uh, without the user. The understanding that design is uh, rooted in a historical context is something very new for science, but it grows end, end with end with uh, design disciplines. The term industrial design, coined at the same time at, uh, as phenomenology, um, but from there, the aesthetic experience, one of the focal points in industrial design, is no longer a center of player. The design experience has long changed to a variety of phenomena that describe the human conscious. Um, if this is right, it will please Heidegger. Throughout his book, he's trying to eradicate the private aesthetic experience from uh, the work of art. And Heidegger also talks about equipment, the tools, the same tools. For the first time, he put them in two situations. For him, there is ready to hand and presence to hands. Presence at end, sorry. For him, the vessel disappear in use. And when the vessel disappear, the material disappear. In phenomenological terms, the intention to act conceals the material. There is no struggle, strife, Heidegger liked to use these words, between the earth and the world, um, the material disappears. The iPhone is not a casual choice for this lecture. I could choose the cellular uh, culture, apps, um, various designs of the new phones, um, but this is no different than other discussions like Heidi have about, uh, Don Heidi have about ATMs or weather application. However, the iPhone is, in my opinion, uh, a clear marker, perhaps a source, to a theory I would like to argue. Everyone, everyone point to a source. Uh, with Heidegger, Descartes is a reconfigurer, and Kant is only articulator. Uh, Thomas Kuhn, will say Newton and Einstein bring new paradigms. Uh, Firebend say that there is ocean of ideas. 
not uh, rooted with scientific method, but with historical context. Um, the iPhone, although we know and we, most of us are young enough to know its direct and indirect roots, serves me for this purpose. Not only it's marked as a source for me, I think its influence, as Heidegger claims, is making something new, as art or as design. Now, I will talk a little bit about Don Heidi. Don Heidi talk about multi-stability structure. He take the, the two situation from Heidegger and add some new, uh, define some new situation. And we can also, also say with great precision, uh, chron chronological precision, that the maturation, maturation of industrial design is basically the same as the steps he described in his book. Design, um, since the dawn of history, began its function with embodiment. Um, tools, weapons, all those instruments, industrial or artistics, are continu continuation of the human body. This is the first stability. When Joseph Sinel uh, designed the model, the step on scale, he made an hermeneutic relationship between, between the man and the world. Hermeneutic relationship is something that interrupts the world. Help us understand it. Most of the devices we know from the industrial design have this relation. They explain the world for us. The other, the device that communicate with the person, come to us with the increasing importance of user experience. The ATM, for example, is one of this, those devices. This is the third stability. Last but not least is the background ratio. I think this is for us as designers also a very uh, late stage. We understand that in multi-state world, the presence of the device have a meaning. We also owe a lot of this for uh, one breathing uh, lead lamp in front of Apple computers. So we can already distinguish, without further thought, a vagueness in the definition of an iPhone as a tool. In order to strengthen my connection uh, to the argument, I move to the material field. Material is swallowed up by its usability. The usefulness, which the instrument immersed in, cover the signs of the material struggle. Only fracture reveals the material. This is by Heidegger. With ID2, multi-stability rose from the role of the device. The ITM, the car, everything it talks about have a distinct usability. But is it possible to analyze the materiality of the modern design in terms of intent, content, or erosion? Content skip from device to device, seamlessly now. Um, erosion is no longer graduate, and we don't feel the material when iPhone break with one outlayer, the glass, but technology will soon beat this obstacle as well. Moreover, the intent, the most fundamental concept of the design, what nail do we knock when we pick up the phone? My argument is this usability forces itself on the plot of land that the designer has cleared. In less dramatic terms than Heidegger description, the designer attitude through design is a relation of exposure. If it's not material, it is not material shape ratio anymore. We don't need to de determine the tool use of usefulness, nor the technology in its design. And this last paragraph is one I need to explain a little bit more. Designers have taken the view that we are giving shape to technology. It used to be that technology opened up new worlds for us, and then um, and the technology is useless without the connection to the user. However, today, and this is relatively new uh, concept in science as well, we don't talk anymore about science, technology. There is different sciences and there are different technologies. And I think also for design, there are several completely roles um, as a designer that we need to break. Most of us and most of the things we design still have the same stability as we used to be as it used to be. But I argue that with the iPhone, there is a new role to play. In, in this part of the new role, we create in a different way than in the past. We build a structure that doesn't exist technologically. The usefulness 
as it comes so far fills every void. If not every void, if not every void, at least the successful ones. The designer uncover and the technology malchitz <laughs> and the technology covers. I'm sorry, and the usefulness covers. Um, the use of Heidegger for this lecture is uh, part of what I'm trying to demonstrate. I don't like him very much. He's egocentric, and uh, his philosophy is sometimes not veiled. The story spins around the present shoes, Van Gogh, uh, the Netherlands, Van Gogh homelands, peasants wear wooden slippers. Some of them still do it today. Um, so he spins a lot of stories about things that are not true. But I learned from him how I can abandon the facts and stay with the structure. And then I realize if it's OK that I will abandon the usability and stay with the structure of the design. This is what brought me here. Um, on the next stage, on the next product, I ask you to try to imagine instead of research. Try to imagine, imagine a phone without a screen or only a screen phone. This is not far enough, but the very use uh, of the word phone may be limits. Try to imagine a hole in the middle. Try to imagine everything you like. If you will be a Heideggerian artist, usefulness will cover the, the place you cleared, and then others will, uh, will articulate your design. If not, maybe you are a bad artist or bad designers, but it's okay because also Van Gogh he wasn't a very good artist at this time. Thank you very much. <laughs>